Ladies and gentlemen, please help me welcome Eric D'Alessandro! Please, thank you, you can sit, you can sit. Thank you so, so much. Oh my God, look at this. I love you too. Thank you so much for coming. Look at these beautiful faces. Thank you guys so much. I can feel the love in the room. Hello, ma'am, sit down, okay? Got shit to do up here. Um, kind of a big night for me. Don't need you fucking this up. Um, I can feel the love in the room. Thank you guys so much, man. I just, I wanna get back to this. I wanna get back to human contact and love with each other. I don't give a fuck who you voted for, okay? I don't care. Can we get back to that? Not talking about this shit. I don't give a shit who you are. Just, let's just talk about sports or something, right? I just, I, it's like we become like the mafia. No matter what your side does, you take their side. Like, what, this is like some mafia mentality. Like, they, like you, know, you never go against the family, right? No, I'm, I'm like, never? I'm from an Italian family, okay? My dad puts essential air on 78. I go against the family, okay? I go against the family. I don't know, I don't know what's happening in the world. Everything has become political. It's ripped from us. Brands are political. Colors are political. It's like, what the fuck? What are we doing? Are we more complex as human beings? Some things you're gonna be liberal about. Some things you're gonna be conservative about, right? Because you're a fucking human being, right? I'm sick and tired of like seeing a brand or something and knowing everything about you. I'm sick and tired of seeing the Subaru and being like, yeah, I know who you voted for. Um, <laughs> we're more complex than that as people. Where's like the Bernie Sanders supporter with the F-150, the steel balls in the back? Where's that guy? <laughs> He's gotta exist. He's gotta be out there somewhere, right? <laughs> Everything's been taken from us. We were Americans for like, what, 20 minutes during the pandemic? <laughs> Maybe a half hour, we all came together like, I'll wear the mask for my country, I do this. <laughs> I'm a proud patriot, I'll stay inside, I'll save lives, right? An hour later, it became political. No one told me, I'm on the phone with my dad, he's going to the store, I'm like, don't forget your mask. He's like, mask, are you a fucking liberal? And I was like, what? <laughs> When did this? No one told me that this was a political thing. I was confused because either you fucking hate the masks and you burn them on your birthday or you wear them in your weird Hillary Clinton sex parties. That's like the only, I'm stuck in the middle. Like I, I just want to go to Target. I don't have any, they saying I got to wear one. I guess I got to wear one. You know what I mean? Like I, I also don't want to pay this much for fucking toothpaste, but some shit you just, you gotta do, right? I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I didn't like it, but like, you know, you wanna stop at red lights? <laughs> Some shit you just gotta do, right? I, I was just very confused by that. And it became political in, in, in a second. I'm fighting with my friends about the vaccines. I'm like, do you realize we don't know fucking anything? You realize that, right? <laughs> I'm telling my friends, like, I went to high school with you, okay? <laughs> I was there. You can't deny the facts of science because you don't like the results of the science. Like when you and I failed science, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. I don't know why this makes me a liberal because you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> Only thing I ever learned in high school from these fucking kids was how to get a chalk penis on the back of a priest. That's the only thing. <laughs> I've ever learned, uh, my friends were the dumbest fucking people. They failed every subject, but when it came to getting a dick onto something, they became like that, that scene in The Beautiful Mind when the, the math equations are just like. Okay, Eric, listen. According to my calculations, if we get chalk and draw a giant cock on this fabric chair, then when Brother Rob sits down, I'll ask him a question, and when he stands up, there will be a dick on his back. 
So excuse me for not listening to what vaccine this fucking kid thinks I should get, okay? <laughs> you giving up PhDs at LA Fitness now? What the fuck's going on? <laughs> it's very strange to me. I'm getting called a liberal because I, I, I felt bad for the employees at Trader Joe's. Remember that woman? She went viral for screaming at the employee at Trader Joe's because she didn't want to wear a mask. I'm like, why am I a liberal? Because this lady's a bitch. I don't know why that. <laughs> You've seen the video. The woman, she's screaming at some fucking teenage kid just trying to be at work. Excuse me, sir. Sir, I am recording. Yes, this message is going out to all 15 of my Facebook friends. So <laughs> I will tell them to no longer shop at Trader Joe's. And I'm just like, lady, you, you think that's Joe? You think that's Joe, this fucking kid? <laughs> Does that look like Trader Joe to you? You, th you, think, you think he's the one taking your freedom away? What the fuck are you talking about? Are you proud of your store's policies, sir? The kid's like, yeah, 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 these are my policies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I made it a rule, everybody has to dress like Ace Ventura when they're selling <laughs> quinoa. These are my fucking rules. I can't even get off the Halloween lady. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> no, I don't know what the fuck, like that's, it's, it's a weird time. Like everything, everything is political. When I'm staying at my parents' house, I go to Whole Foods, okay? Cause I'm a hipster fucking douchebag, right? I don't know, I'm, I don't know. I was told that this is the good water to get. So I go there to get it, right? And when my, my dad opens the fridge. He's like, what the fuck is this? Organic chicken? Are you a fucking liberal? I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't know pesticides were for the Republicans. Did you? I didn't know that. I thought we all like healthy food. I don't know what the fuck. It's crazy. It's bizarre. Everything's been ripped from us. Everything becomes political. I'm just very confused by that. You know, just the screaming. I think it's like a, I think it's like a humility problem. I feel like no one's humble anymore. That's the problem. Everyone thinks they have the answers. They know what they, like they know what we should do about politics. Everybody thinks that they're like so smart. It's like, what happened to humility? The good old fashioned, like, I don't fucking know anything. Remember that? Remember that shit growing up? <laughs> you weren't like, you didn't think you had all the answers. And like, I, I credit that to what's going on right now. Nobody, like, humble is gonna walk into a store, like, can you believe the customer service? It's like, yeah, they're at fucking work. <laughs> Who wants to be at work? Do you? I don't care how much you love your job. I love my coworkers. I love my boss. If your boss came and was like, hey, anybody wanna go home right now? You'd be like, I'll go home right fucking now. <laughs> I'll never come back. <laughs> Nobody wants to be at work. <laughs> I used to work at CVS, okay? I would spend eight hours a day behind the register praying to God everyone would drop dead. That's what I did at work. <laughs> That's what I did at work. That's why I quit CVS, okay? I shouldn't have been there. I didn't belong there. You know, I don't, I don't buy into this shit our parents tell us. You gotta give everything you do in life 110%. I'm like, the fuck I do? I quit everything, because I shouldn't have been there. That's why I think you should chase your dreams, because you, otherwise you're gonna be a fucking miserable prick. My brother also worked at that CVS. He would chase people into the fucking parking lot if they stole something. <laughs> I was like, he should work at CVS. <laughs> I'm like, steal me, get me the fuck out of here, please. <laughs> He's a cop now. Here you go. <laughs> he should have worked at fucking CVS. But yeah, man, screaming at the employees, it's just, I gotta remind my girl of this shit every fucking morning. Every morning, she comes home and she's furious at the employees at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and I'm like, just stop going there. They don't want you there. That's why they're, that's why they're fucking your order up. They think you're just gonna give up one day and you're just gonna stop. <laughs> it's not a coincidence. Everyone in here has had their order fucked up by Dunkin', okay? It's not a coincidence. They're trying to fuck it up so you just go home. That's what I would do if I worked there. Even they're surprised. This fucking girl is back again. What is she? <laughs> she ordered a large iced coffee. I gave her a small hot chocolate. She's still fucking here. <laughs> Give it up, woman. <laughs> Duncan, what are we gonna do? So every morning she comes home. Here's what I learned about living with a woman for a little while, okay? I've noticed that women can't just tell you what's wrong. 
They can't just tell you what happened. They have to like make sounds and hints that something happened. When your girlfriend or your wife stubs her toe, she doesn't say, ow, I stubbed my toe. You hear it. She's like, I'm hurt. <laughs> so you gotta play the game. What happened? <laughs> Did you hurt your toe? <laughs> Just get to the fucking point. Just tell, uh, I, I, I'm still not gonna give a shit. Just get to it quicker, <laughs> you know? Like when she comes home and she's upset about something, she slams the door really loud. And if I don't ask what's wrong, she'll slam it again. She's like, ah! <laughs> Upset about something in the kitchen. <laughs> Somebody should ask me about it. <laughs> so I gotta pause when I'm watching and I'm like, what now? <laughs> what now? You're not gonna believe this. <laughs> First of all, ladies, we believe it, okay? <laughs> I've never dated a woman that had not gonna believe it territory for a story. Never, it's never, your girl's never like, you're not gonna believe this. I found Amelia Earhart. It's never that. <laughs> it's always some basic shit that you can totally believe. <laughs> oh, you saw Mike at the mall? Yeah, I believe that. <laughs> we, he lives in this neighborhood. Yes, I believe that. <laughs> That's his mall. <laughs> We're just a little bit different. That's why your girl gets mad at you, but you never tell me anything. It's because like, there's nothing to fucking tell. I got gas. <laughs> well, I save not gonna believe it for something that's hard to believe. That's what guys do. We have a one to 10 scale on severity of something. I'm not gonna throw away a fucking two and like act like it's a story. It's a nothing story. I saved that shit. So when I tell her, you're not gonna believe this, it's something that you can't believe. I went to my friend's bachelor party in Vegas. I came home, I'm like, babe, you're not gonna believe this. Frank killed a hooker. Like that's something <laughs> you can't believe happened. She's like, oh my, I know Frank, he's a murderer. Oh my God, he's been in this house. His mother goes to church, I can't believe it. But she'll get you all riled up for the story. She's like, oh my God, it was crazy. We go to Nashville for Kelly's birthday. We're all so drunk we get back to the hotel. You're not gonna believe this. Megan fell. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? That's the, this isn't even a story. What the fuck are you talking about? Megan always falls. She's fucking 90 pounds Irish and it has a drinking problem. Yeah, she's gonna fall from time to time. <laughs> but you gotta entertain this shit. You don't wanna be an asshole, right? You gotta try to be a good guy. You gotta entertain this shit. You're not gonna believe this. I go to Duncan. <laughs> and the girl behind the register always has such an attitude when I walk in there. <laughs> And I'm like, holy shit, what? <laughs> I can't fucking believe this. <laughs> Let me see if I got this straight, babe. Hold on, you mean to tell me that this 23-year-old girl who was up all night, probably snorting Adderall, <laughs> blowing guys she met off Tinder, you mean to tell me she wasn't happy? to wake up at six o'clock in the morning and make a spoiled bitch a cookie dough, iced coffee, two pumps of pumpkin, not too much ice so it doesn't melt. <laughs> you think she's living her fucking dream right now? <laughs> Humility. Humility. That's all we need. I've noticed the only time an employee is actually there to help you is when you go to a store and you want an employee nowhere fucking near you. That's the only time they will stalk you around the fucking store, looking up your ass with a flashlight and shit like this, right? 
I go to Victoria's Secret. I was trying to buy her like yoga pants one time. It's like a fucking rapist. They're all chair. I'm like, I'm not gonna sniff the underwear. Please get away from me. Please get away from me. Okay, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm leaving. <laughs> then you go to Lowe's, where you have absolutely no fucking idea where anything is. Not one employee to be found at Lowe's. I've never seen an employee at Lowe's, have you? The commercial's like, we'll be there every step of the way to build your dream home. I haven't seen one fucking person here. Every time I walk into Lowe's, I'm like, you know you're open, right? Whenever my dad would send me there for a screw or something, I'd put, put on a camel pack because I know it's gonna be there for like seven hours. I needed some hydration, you know? I go there now, I'm just looking for something simple. You know, I finally see one of the guys in the blue vest. I'm, oh my God, I think it's a worker. I think it's a worker. <laughs> oh, oh, thank God, please help, there's others. <sighs> I think there's a guy dead by the key machine. He couldn't wait any longer. <sighs> for the love of God, where the fuck is duct tape? Where is duct tape? I checked plumbing, lumber, where is duct tape? And what's their answer always? That's not my section. It's never their fucking, it's never their section at Lowe's. Where is your section, sir? Where is your section? One guy told me, he had the nerve to tell me, you gotta check hardware for that. I was like, I thought this was hardware. <laughs> this, this isn't, a, is it, what is it, Barnes and Noble? This is a fucking hardware store, is it not? So when I go places, I'm like, yeah, that checks out. Of course, my fucking self check out of Target's blinking and no one's helping me. Of course, yeah. That's how it should go, right? It's a weird thing. If you look on the internet, everyone's so fucking confident. Everyone has all the answers at all the times. I know what's wrong with this country. It's like, no, no you fucking don't. You're just as dumb as I am. You know, we don't know anything. Like Albert Einstein was a humble man. You ever heard of Albert Einstein? I don't know if you know much about him. If you Google some of his quotes, he was a pretty fucking humble guy, okay? Albert Einstein would often say, I'm not the smartest person in the world. I just have the most questions. That's right. He believed you could learn something from everyone that you meet. Albert fucking <laughs> Einstein said that, okay? You fast forward to 2023. You give your mom's friend, Joanne, a Facebook account. <laughs> oh. Yikes. All caps, 12 hours a day. Bill Gates is trying to fuck my kids. <laughs> That's what the vaccine means. He's gonna, he's gonna microchip and fuck our kids. If you're an American, share this. I'm just like, okay, what's your proof of this, Joanne? I'm telling you right now. <laughs> Bill Gates trying to fuck it. Because that's what our parents do. They have no fucking proof. They don't know how to cite a source. They would just say something insane and then yell, I'm telling you right now in front of it. <laughs> and they think that proves something, you know? My dad's like, you can thank Biden for these gas prices. Really? Uh, how do you know that, dad? I'm telling you right now. <laughs> I'm telling you right now. He's raising those gas. Also, thank you, dad. That fucking clears it up. Thank you for clearing that. I have no further questions about that. You're telling me right now. <laughs> but you gotta, you gotta, look, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, be, gotta be humble about it. So you, you, I, I, I can't fault the man, okay? My parents, you didn't have the internet growing up. You know, it wasn't like now, you pull out your phone at dinner, boom, right there, little rascals, 94, not 95, I fucking told you, asshole, right? <laughs> they couldn't do that at dinner. Prove someone wrong or right immediately, okay? Our parents didn't have this stuff. I'm telling you right now, was a source, okay? There was no IMDB they could look up, you know? Didn't have Google. What'd your parents have? I heard, that was their Google. It was as good as gold, and the trifecta, they say, oh, <laughs> there's nothing your parents love more than I'm telling you right now, I heard that's what they say, okay? That proves it, that's the, no more questions, oh, okay, Check, checkmate, I guess. You, you proved me wrong. 
I'm telling you right now, I heard that's what they say. <laughs> as good as gold, right? They don't, don't even know what that means. We just, we just, we just say that when we want to believe something, right? I don't have any proof. Go home tonight, ask your parents, hey, how come we couldn't have had snacks before I went swimming? <laughs> that's what they say, I don't fucking know. Just don't, don't die in your mother's time. Don't die in my time. And of course, as a little kid, right, what do we say? Who the fuck's they, mom? Who is they? That's, I, that was my question. Who is they? I'm glad everyone's changing their pronouns now. Is this they? This is they? Am I supposed to ask this they? Maybe Demi Lovato knows why I can't have pretzels before I go in the pool. Let's ask Demi. Yeah, yep. I think the whole world started to go downhill when our parents got on Facebook. I think that was the... Uh... <laughs> it's hard to pinpoint an exact moment in history when everything changed, but that's, that's it right there, you know? <laughs> Before our parents got on Facebook, the internet made sense. Like, every decade had a feel. 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. There was, there was fashion, there was movies, there was colors. It all had a feel. Ever noticed like the past decade plus, it just, we're all still trapped in this weird dimension. Nothing's changing. <laughs> we're all on the same fucking apps, just staring at our phones. I think we all died in 2012 and no one told us. <laughs> Went to some alternate weird universe where nothing makes sense anymore. And like, cause before our parents got to the internet, it was like the kids thing. Like, I don't know if you remember that, but it used to be the thing the kids were doing. Like, they didn't know what the fuck was going on with that shit. Like in, in my generation, I do think we have a little bit of a unique point of view because we grew up alongside of the internet. Like, it wasn't like before the internet was like, uh, a fax machine, a who's he, what's it? It wasn't like that. <laughs> and it wasn't like my nieces and nephews just staring at a fucking screen for 12 hours a day. Like that's not fucking, like the, the, the Koreans aren't fucking brainwashed them. Daddy shark, da 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 Daddy shark, da 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 Daddy shark, da 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 Daddy shark. Death to America, do 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 do. Death to America, do 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 do. Death to America, do 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 do. It was good, we had the best of both worlds. We'd go on AOL for like the day, then we'd go back outside to play manhunt and have a normal childhood. It was the best of both worlds, it was the best. And it's like a weird war between the baby boomers and the millennials, which is very strange right now because there's obviously both, there's truth to both sides. Like, first of all, find out what a millennial is before you start bashing them, okay? Because I got my friends who are 33, 34 years old being like, yeah, bro, these fucking millennials are pussies. I'm like, you're a millennial! We were introduced to it like very slowly and responsibly. You know what I mean? It was a little bit here, a little bit there. Not all the way at once. You know, like we were eight years old. We knew how to like code, like little fucking Zuckerbergs. We knew how to code in the back end of an AOL profile. We didn't just like choose the color black. We had to write hashtag F that, 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 to get black. Remember that shit? You had to know how to speak algorithm, okay? Eight years old, speaking algorithm. We knew we had a food, and then we go, we go back outside, have a normal childhood, but we know a little algorithm with us, you know? <laughs> you grow up a little bit more, the internet evolved a little bit more, we grew up a little bit more. You'd stay up late where everybody else was sleeping in your house, you go down in the basement to where that one computer was. We only had one computer, remember that shit? <laughs> that one weird computer that just, the light was never off. <laughs> it was like mesmerizing, like what's going on on the computer downstairs? 10 years old, you sneak into a chat room. You stay up late, everyone's sleeping. You're like, hey. Any other lesbians in this chat room tonight? Just one horny lesbian looking for another dirty 25 year old lesbian to talk about lesbian stuff. I go to school the next day, my friend Joe's like, I talked to a lesbian for three <laughs> hours last night. I was like, me too. Me too, Joe. <laughs> we, were we were primed and ready 
when Facebook came our way, we were, we, were, we were ready for this. We were responsible with this bomb. We knew how to handle this shit. You know what I mean? It's like we read the first nine books. We're ready for the 10th book. We know the rules of this universe. We know the characters. We know how to behave. You know, we knew what a poke on Facebook meant. <laughs> we knew it. We, nobody had to explain it to us. We just knew. Eric, you saw Stephanie poked you? Yeah, Stephanie wants some dick. That's what Stephanie wants. I know she poked me. We gotta fuck. That, that, those are the rules of a Facebook I don't make the rules, but I know the rules, right? <laughs> We're responsible with this shit. Your parents didn't read any of the first nine books. They don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, on the 10th book, they kick the door and like, what is this, Facebooks? <laughs> this is Facebooks, right? Show me my old high school crush. I want to see if he's bald. Make me, make me a Facebooks. <laughs> How do I Facebooks? They're, they're, you know, they're, they're moving shit around. Nothing makes sense anymore. It was a cool place for a few years. It was like where we went to flirt and meet girls, meet guys, you know? And all of a sudden, it was like seeing your mom at the club. It's like, why the fuck is my mom on Facebook? <laughs> Why is my mom on Facebook? So you shouldn't be here. This is world colliding. This is no good. It was where we did our thing. You weren't the same person on Facebook as you were at the fucking Thanksgiving dinner table. That wasn't you. You were fucking, you were just some alternate character of who you really want to be on Facebook, taking all cool pictures and shit like this. You know, that wasn't really you. Your parents shouldn't have seen that. It's, it's like seeing your parents. Fuck, this is like, this is weird. This is not, you know what I mean? Like you used to log on to Facebook. It was exciting. You see that like, the notification, the five would light up. It's like, holy shit, what the fuck's behind that five? <laughs> you get butterflies. It was, it was, it was an exciting time. Was I tagged in a photo over the weekend? You know, did my crush accept my friend request? What the fuck's behind that five? <laughs> now one day you log in, it's like 99 plus. You're like, hmm, that's strange. <laughs> did I go viral? But no, your Aunt Louise wants to play Farmville because she, she doesn't have a job, I guess. <laughs> Don't you work, Louise? I can't send you money and be jeweled right now. <laughs> what did you do to this place? <laughs> Nothing made sense. You're getting poked by your grandma. Great grandma, now I gotta fuck you, you happy? <laughs> you think I wanna do this? Those are the rules of Facebook, now we gotta fuck, okay? I told you to read the manual, lady. Why are you here? No one, no one taught us that a wall post was a wall post and a status was a status. We just knew that shit. They were two very different things. A status is where all the horny girls my age in college would make like a, a rap lyric when they were going out curling their hair. Like, did you put the sexy rap lyric there? Yeah, put it on, I put it on, I put it on. <laughs> curling their hair. Something about popping that pussy or something like that, right? So all the guys your age would like the pussy status. Oh my God, he liked my status. We're totally gonna fuck tonight. It was a way to like flirt. A status was like a basically like showing your eggs, bringing them to market, you know? <laughs> and then all of a sudden on the pussy post, your aunt, your, your aunt Diane's like, happy birthday, Danielle. It's like, this doesn't, <laughs> this doesn't go here. That's a wall post. This is pussy time, okay? <laughs> fuck, get off Facebook. I don't know. What do we do? I don't know. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I don't know what to do. Because there's nothing we can do. You know, if you have some sort of like different opinion, that gets ripped from you and it's called a political party. Like you can't have an objective truth anymore. They make you be red or blue. It's like we're all just a little purple, aren't we? Right? Everybody's a little purple. Like Prince. <laughs> I don't know, man. <laughs> You learn a lot though. You learn a lot living in different places and like, because I'll obviously a lot of you know I'm from Staten Island, New York, right? I mean, somebody from Staten Island. I love Staten Island. I'm proud to be from Staten Island, but growing up on Staten Island and you, I didn't really fit in with the Staten Islanders. So it was like something a little, you know, I never really felt like one of them. 
you know, because my parents are from Brooklyn. They didn't really have a lot of friends there. So, like, I was just figuring out on my own, like, what the fuck's going on in this place? Like, it was, you know, and everything was, like, a little bit, I was always a little bit different. My mom was always on me for my grammar. She's always correcting my fucking grammar. Like, it's, it's, it's Michael and I, Eric. I'm like, all right, Michael and I, mom, all right. <laughs> then I go to Mike's house. His mom's like, what's wrong? You don't want no more Ronies? I'm like, oh, my God, your mom's fucking stupid. <laughs> oh, my God, that was a double negative. She must be so embarrassed. Oh, my God. <laughs> You know, and like people on Staten Island don't leave Staten Island. So like, whenever they leave Staten they're just looking for Staten Island again. I've noticed that. <laughs> they go to fucking they, 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 the pyramids of, of, of Giza. They're like, where the fuck, should you, got, you guys got good bagels or what? It's like, this isn't. <laughs> You're coming here to get away from the bagels, Joey. This is not, you know, you go to a fucking rainforest to some, hang out with some tribe that hasn't seen civilization. Like, yeah, that pizza's probably trash though. It's like, I didn't go here. <laughs> For pizza. <laughs> How yo, how's the, yo, how's the, how's the bacon, egg, and cheese in LA, bro? I'm like, I didn't go there for the bacon, egg, and cheese. I'll stick to fucking Forest Avenue if I want a bacon, egg, and cheese, okay? <laughs> or Victory Boulevard. They're actually better on Victory Boulevard. <laughs> so growing up there, everyone, like, everything you see on TV about Staten Island is 100% accurate. <laughs> I wish I could be like, that's not really us, but I'm like, fuck, that's kind of us, okay. <laughs> And everyone on Staten Island is cruising at a fucking 12. You know what I mean? Even the Jews on Staten Island are like, what the fuck you looking at, douchebag? Eh? I'm like, okay, it's, uh... Easy, Isaac, it's the Sabbath, okay? Can we just get, be friends? <laughs> so growing up there, if you're not like really fucking, like you don't really feel like one of them. Like I don't have a stereotypical Italian Upbringing. My parents aren't off the boat immigrants. When you come to my house, my parents aren't there like, hey, cuckoos, I got up with that. I don't have that whole. <laughs> That's not me. My uncle wasn't making fucking shoes in the basement. I didn't have, <laughs> I didn't have that shit. You know what I mean? I was very American. I loved PB and J, you know, stuff like this. And like, I also didn't feel like the Italian Americans that I knew, because they all wanted to be on fucking The Sopranos. They're like, hey, fucking douchebag. <laughs> Like, I never had a, my uncles didn't know a guy, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't have an Aunt Donna addicted to cigarettes. Every Italian family has an Aunt Donna. She's probably here somewhere. She was born 65, never younger, never older. Super tan, addicted to leopard. Everything is just, her fucking car is leopard. Her house is leopard. And she's always at Christmas scaring a baby. <laughs> always in his face. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be a heartbreaker, this one. <laughs> You're so handsome. He's so handsome. <laughs> What's wrong? He looks scared. Why are you scared? It's like, Jesus Christ, Donna, I'm fucking scared, okay? Can you put your head back on and put your tongue back in your mouth, please? <laughs> so growing up there, I was always like, okay, those are the Italians. I guess I'm, I'm not Italian enough for that. You know, I have a super Italian last name, right? Genetically, I am technically from Italy long enough ago. Like I never really, I was always like, okay, I, I'm, I'm white. Those are the Italians. I had Puerto Rican friends, black friends. Those are the Italians, I'm white. Cool, everyone knows their place, right? <laughs> Didn't realize just how culturally Italian I was being from Staten Island <laughs> until I moved to California <laughs> and I met actual white people. <laughs> from places like Utah. <laughs> and whatever the fuck Wyoming is. <laughs> it was the first time in my life I saw a group of people and I was like, am I white? <laughs> and look, it's a decent question. I'm, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to get street cred, okay? I know that I was... I was very privileged, I had a great life. I'm just saying, whatever you could say about white people doesn't make sense to Italian people, that's all I'm saying. 
you know? There's just something a little bit different. That's all I'm saying. Growing up, I used to worship all black comedians. I used to want to be like all the black comedians, okay? They'd make me laugh, they'd make fun of white people, but I didn't know what the fuck they were talking about. <laughs> For example, every black comedian in the 90s would be like, yeah, man, white people don't hit their kids. I'd be like, uh. <laughs> My mom's hitting me right now, so I don't. <laughs> Like, why kids get punished, right? They have timeouts and shit like this, right? I've seen reruns of Seventh Heaven. They get things taken away from them, right? No computer for a week, Scott. That's what happens in like a traditional white family, right? So I had this friend from Colorado. We're talking one day. He's also another comedian living in Los Angeles. We're talking about our childhood one day. And he was like, wait a minute, man. Wait a minute. You mean to tell me your mom never took away your PlayStation? <laughs> That's fucking awesome. You're so lucky. <clears throat> Give me one of those. Just, mm. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm, real I'm real lucky, Scott. I'm real lucky. <laughs> My mother never took away my PlayStation, but... You want to know what she did take away? <laughs> my fucking kneecaps, Scott. <laughs> That's what my mom took away, okay? My mother took away my ability to chase the ice cream man. <laughs> That's what my mom took away. I'd rather not play Crash Bandicoot for a week. That seems like a pretty good deal. <laughs> Instead of missing out on making core childhood memories, guys, wait up! <laughs> Hold on! She wasn't gonna give me a dollar anyway, so what the fuck? My mother has hit me with bats, chairs, spoons, my siblings, anything she got her hands on. It was always something new, like a wrestling match. She'd pull out something, like, we don't have a pool table. Where the fuck did you get a pool stick from? Didn't give a fuck. Italians hit their kids. There was no secret. About my, my father threatened me in public. Is he gonna give a fuck what these people think? <laughs> Not a care in the world. And for some reason, what's weird too is like the more your mom would fuck you up, you'd still be more afraid of your dad for some reason. Like where is the logic in that? Right? Like your mom would commit legal child abuse on you. <laughs> but you were more afraid of what this guy's gonna do, right? Your dad's threats were always in the future. Wait till your father comes home. Want me to tell your father? Wait till your father hears about this. My dad's biggest threat was, don't make me get up. Get the fuck up. Get up. What's gonna happen if you get up? Was there a magic trick? Get up. You're gonna threaten me with exercise? You fat fuck, get up. I, I, should, have, I should have known too. It was always like a threat, never like actually came to fruition. I, should, I was 19, I should have been like, I don't think this guy's gonna do shit. <laughs> just a little bit different, that's all I'm saying, you know? That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I should get an N-word pass. I'm just saying it's a little bit different. <laughs> just a little bit off, there's a gray area, okay? It was news to me. I went living in Los Angeles, okay? I was in church. This very progressive couple had like a four or five-year-old son in church. This kid stomps his feet on the pew, looking at everyone in the church. He's just like, da, da, da. <laughs> So me being me, I'm like, oh, this kid's about to get fucked up. <laughs> Pay, wake up. This kid's about to get punted to the stained glass. This is gonna be fucking incredible. But that's when I learned about agreements and discussions. This was news to me. I'm waiting for his dad to fucking punt this kid. But, but how did Doug handle the situation? We're in California, so he's very, you know, he's like, excuse me, buddy? Sequoia? Sequoia, excuse, excuse me? 
I'm just, thank you for making eye contact. Thank you, we, that was really good. I just, I don't, I don't wanna say that I'm disappointed because that's a negative word, okay? I will say that I'm surprised because I, I thought we had an agreement that we weren't gonna be screaming during the mass. Do you remember that, buddy? Do you remember that? What's that? Go fuck myself? Okay, okay, all right. Um. No, it's fine, he can, he can live his truth. This is his journey, I'll let him express himself freely. So I'm seeing this, I'm having like flashbacks to a war I was never in. I'm ready for, I, all of a sudden I have, I'm like in, back in Vietnam with a fucking rifle. <laughs> ready for fucking war, because if that was me, not even that long ago. <laughs> in a Catholic Italian household, you can't mess around in church. That's where your parents have to pretend they're good people, okay? <laughs> Right? Like they got, you know. Like we're just threatening your life in the parking lot. So if I was ever like talking too loud or bothering my sister, all my mom had to do was give my dad the signal in the middle of church, right? She'd be acting all holy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh. Kill him, fucking kill him. Take him outside, kill him. Kill him right now. Jesus Christ said I am the Lord. <laughs> My dad will receive the signal, he's like. <laughs> he's hearing fucking Guns and Roses. Welcome to the jungle! <laughs> we got fun and games. He would then grab my ear so fucking hard, almost ripping it out of my skull. And then he would whisper into a child's ear the most threatening, <laughs> fucked up shit you've ever heard in your life, right in front of God, didn't give a shit, by the way. Not a care, I'm like, I can't have meat on Friday, but this shit's no problem. <laughs> Listen to me. If you don't stop talking, I swear to Christ, I am gonna crucify you next to Jesus on that fucking cross. Do you understand me? He looks a little lonely up there, doesn't he? Look at me. You think I want to be here? I'm only here because your mother drags me here, okay? I'm already going to hell. I'll fucking kill you. Shut the fuck up. What? Sing the fucking song. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Just a little bit different. It's awesome. Just a little bit different, that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I don't think I should get my own history month. I'm just saying, it's a little bit, it's a little bit different, okay? I guess I should have known though. There were signs along the way, you know? Like I love the show Full House. Remember the show Full House? I used to love watching Full House with my brothers, but I realized like the Tanner family doesn't really act like the D'Alessandro family. You know, in one episode in particular, Stephanie Tanner had a problem at school, okay? Her friend Charles was being hit by his father, okay? Remember, you remember this, right? And she's like, wait a minute, I thought you said you get hit by a door. He was like, yeah, 
a door named Dad. <laughs> the music got serious. I was like, what happened? What happened? I don't know what happened. What did I miss? What did I miss? <laughs> the episode got real serious. Stephanie told Uncle Jesse, Uncle Jesse, like he hits him, we gotta do something about this. <laughs> Fuck it. Yeah. Uncle Jesse calls the police. I'm not making this up, you go watch it, okay? <laughs> Uncle Jesse calls the police. The police take Charles away to a foster home. And he's like, at the end of his episode, he's like, Stephanie, you did the right thing. Because of you, Charles's dad can't hurt him tonight. You did the right thing. And he breaks character, looks at the camera, speaking directly to the audience at home. And he's like, if you... <laughs> or anyone you know <laughs> is being hurt by their parents, please call this number. I remember watching that my brother's like, Are we supposed to call this number? Are we supposed to... <laughs> My brother Brian, like, no, that's different. I'm like, how the fuck is that different? He said... <laughs> I called one day, I was like, is Uncle Jesse there? Can I speak to Uncle Jesse? <laughs> Just a little bit different, okay, you know? But you try, look, you want it, you want it. Look, I, I, again, again, everything is not so fucking black and white. You know, there's areas of gray. You know, be like purple, right? I just like, I don't know, I don't know. I want to be a good husband. I want to be a good dad. And like, I, I don't know what's wrong. I'm not saying like, you know, I don't, I don't want to put my gun in my kid's mouth like my dad did to me. But I, I you know, I also want to have, I don't want to have my kid put his gun in my mouth. That's, there's got to be some, maybe some in between, you know? You got to think about this shit when you become a dad, when you become a husband. Well, you know, I got married about a month ago. We're newlywed. So, sorry, honey. Yes to a girl. Anyway. They're like, tell it to your pants. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I want to I be, like, be a good, I want to be an ally to women. I want to be like, I want a, a, a feminist, right? I want to be an ally to women, right? I want to be. We we just got married, but we've been living together for like five years now. So like you learn things when you live with a woman. Like all that equality shit we hear about, that's not what women want at all. I didn't know that. <laughs> I, that that was news to me. Women don't want equality. What do you? Maybe in the fucking sixties, but that shit ran its course. That the girls my age don't want to vote. I'm like, babe, you're gonna vote? She's like, for what? I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> they want the double standards to go their way, and they want you to just shut the fuck up and take it. Just, just, just tell us that. I want to, you know, don't mask it as something else. Just be honest. Like, I want to be Hitler. Just tell me that. <laughs> so we can work on that, you know? Like, everything you could say in the 50s that was so horrible, women are openly saying it now about us, and no one gives a shit. No one cares. Back in the 50s, it's like, shut the fuck up, honey. Men are talking. And it's like, oh, God, I agree. That's fucking disgusting, right? You put on the view, it's like, men, shut the fuck up. Women are talking! And I'm like, yeah! I'm like, okay, I don't know how this is gonna work because this isn't really how equality works, but okay. <laughs> Back in the day, you don't, don't ever speak for women. Men would speak for women. You know, like, don't ever speak for a woman. It's like, yeah, I totally fucking agree. Of course, yes, it's a human being. Don't ever speak for somebody else. Then I go to a barbecue. Hey, Eric, you want a hot dog? He ate already, he's full. <laughs> You're full. To so go, okay, I don't know how the fuck this is equality, but all right. I hear that shit on the news, social media, equality. I'm like, I'm, I'm down for equality, equality. I'm like, equality, equality, equality. <laughs> you move in with a woman, it's like, we're equals, right? Yeah, can I pick out the color of the couch for the living room? Fuck you, that's my house. <laughs> okay, equality though, right? I, I gotta love equality, right? <laughs> Try to have an opinion on what color the backsplash will be in your kitchen. <laughs> See how fucking equal you are, okay? <laughs> It's horse shit. It's, 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 I get dragged to Home Goods every goddamn weekend. I'm not allowed to buy anything. 
I get my hand slapped away from the cart like I'm in fucking Toys R Us in 1999. <laughs> No, uh, put that back, we're not getting that. We don't need that, we don't, we don't need that. I'm like, batteries for the remote? Yeah, we do need these, that's why I came here. You wanna talk about what we don't need? How about that fucking barn door you're buying that someone turned into a mirror? We fucking need that for what? In case old McDonald comes over one night and needs something to snort cocaine off of? That's what... I don't know who Joanna Gaines is, but I'm gonna fucking kill that bitch. I am gonna kill that bitch. There's gonna be a whole other massacre in Waco. It's gonna look nothing like the other one. I'm turning into Will Smith. I'm like, keep that bitch gains out this fucking house. <laughs> if I gotta hear another fucking word about shiplap, I'm, I'm just gonna kill myself. <laughs> Because I know, look, some of you probably have great taste. Some of you probably do, but not all of you do, okay? <laughs> and your house just like, it looks like a fucking cookie cutter, first grade classroom. Everything's labeled now. Every girl my age loves to label shit. Oh, this is butter. This is butter. In case you couldn't tell by it being butter, this is butter. Wall. Plate. What, do I have a fucking spelling test in the morning? What are we doing here? Oh my God, babe, that was brilliant. Writing eat above the refrigerator? <laughs> I was gonna take a shit next to the dishwasher. I thought, <laughs> I thought this was the bathroom. But now I know that's where we eat. <laughs> Double standard horse shit. Imagine if that was your husband's idea. Imagine if that was your husband's idea. You build your dream home, you're designing it. It's like, babe, listen to this. <laughs> then I got a great fucking idea for the kitchen. <laughs> you know where we eat? Stay with me, babe, stay with me. <laughs> I wanted to say, eat. <laughs> Pretty fucking good, right? <laughs> Would she entertain that? Would she be like, I'm sorry, he's usually at work. He's usually at work. <laughs> Equality. Yeah, I know. We get a fucking man cave. That's our consolation prize. What? He gets a man cave. I have five floors of whatever the fuck I want. He gets a man cave. It's like, oh yeah, thanks. Thanks, babe. I get to watch the playoffs with the fucking water damage and the mold downstairs. <laughs> you must really love me. I get to breathe in all this fucking asbestos. You must. I wonder why you live 10 years longer than me. Maybe it's all the fucking mold from the walls. It's insane, bro. There's nothing you can do about it. No one's gonna change. No one's like, oh my God, I'm the problem. Who the fuck says that? No one. <laughs> I'm very lucky. I have a very good one. I really believe that I found like, I, I found like the right woman. We worked on ourselves for each other. I think it's like a, a great thing. You gotta have a good, a good backbone, especially in this industry. Like it was, it was hard for me. Like it was tough in the beginning of my career. Cause like she's, uh, she's right there with me. If it wasn't for her, I would not be standing here. That's a fact. And like when I was like doing comedy in the beginning, I'd be in some shitty city with like seven people in the crowd. I'd call her on the phone. She'd be like, I know babe, I, I know, but I'm, I'm tired. I gotta go to sleep. <laughs> and I'd be like, okay, okay. Yeah, just, just hold on, hold on. <sighs> Why don't you talk dirty to me? And she'd be like, no, stop. You always want me to say things I don't want to say. Time out. Here's what she means by that, okay? When you're a younger, you know, 20, 21, 22, what turns you on is the normal dirty shit, right? Spit on my dick, the, the usual stuff, right? <laughs> Gargle my tits, the good old fashioned, you know, the usual shit, right? The stuff your grandma would say. So, oh yeah, because she was a saint. Uh, But like, you know, I was, you know, I'm, I'm 32 now. So like what turns me on now, I guess there's a little, made sure uncomfortable. Like I'm desensitized. I need something a little bit dirtier, right? So she'd be like, you always want me to say things I don't want to say. And I'm like, wait a minute, babe, babe. This isn't real, okay, please. You, you, you're playing the character, okay? This isn't real, no one can hear you. I, I really need this. She's like, fine, but this is the last time I'm doing this. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, baby. You know what I like. Fine. My family gets together way too often. I'm like, oh my God, that's so... Holy shit. 
Oh, I fucking love when you talk like that. Holy shit. What about your uncle's birthday party? What about it? What about your uncle's fucking birthday party? You don't have to come to his birthday. Holy shit. Oh my God. Oh, oh my God. How many fucking Saturdays do these goddamn people want? I can see if it was like a surprise 50th or a 60th, but the drive all the way to New Jersey for a fucking 47th birthday party is just, okay, you're disgusting. Am I done yet? Please, wait, wait, I'm almost there, I'm almost there, I'm almost done. No, stop, I don't wanna say that one. Please, I'm almost done. Fine, my mother's a bitch. Just being real, okay? Ladies, just, one, just once in a while, break that out, okay? I'm just saying. <laughs> they will, he will stay with you forever. Don't listen to your friends. I know a lot of you have kids now. You're trying to spice up the sex life. It gets a little boring. I'm t just don't listen to your friends. They're fucking Vogue at the dentist article. Well, don't, don't listen to that shit. I'm telling you from a guy, okay? Don't, don't try to be sex like, want me to suck your dick? He's going to be like, ugh, it's fucking... <laughs> On your anniversary, you just be like, you want to skip my cousin's destination wedding? He's like, ah! Oh! Oh, 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 fuck, I love you. God damn, I love you. <laughs> no, I want, I want to spend $5,000 to eat chicken fingers in Mexico. That's what I want to do. <laughs> but I'm learning a lot, I'm learning a lot living with a woman. I'm trying to, you know, I'm learning a lot. And like, like I said, I want to be a great husband. I want to be a, a good ally. I don't want to be an asshole guy that oppresses women in any way. Absolutely not. I just want to learn, you know, I should have paid more attention to my mom and my sister because I'm, I'm a little worried about her. Like, I don't know if I should go to the doctor or something. Do, do all women shed this much hair? <laughs> Is she okay? Because every day after the shower, it's like, who the fuck put a Furby in the bathtub? I don't know what, <laughs> are you okay? Living with a woman is basically like living with a German shepherd if that German shepherd was a barber and never swept up after a long day of cutting hair. <laughs> everywhere. Her hair is fucking everywhere. And it's always all over me in the strangest places. And she never understands what I'm doing. Everything she does is perfectly fine. That's her catchphrase. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. She never fucking understands anything. <laughs> she loves to say, I don't understand for everything except for, I don't understand. I'll give you an example. I'll be watching TV in the living room. She comes out of the bedroom, she's like, I don't understand, why is the TV so loud? And I'm like, you don't understand that I like the volume louder than you like? You can't comprehend what's happening right now? But then we go to a taco truck where some sweet little Mexican man starts speaking Spanish to her, the perfect opportunity for, I'm sorry, I don't understand. <laughs> But instead, because she's 25% Puerto Rican, she's just like, hola. <laughs> Como estas? Mucho bien, eh, I'm just like, babe, you can't fucking speak Spanish. You're embarrassing me, please. You can't. Yes, I am. <laughs> she's, like, she's, I mean, she's telling, like, you know, like, she's, you, you, just think, you think living with a woman is going to be so much cooler when you're younger, you know? You need to walk home, open the door. She's standing there, like, in some slutty lingerie outfit, right? Welcome home, baby. I made your favorite. Elio's pizza. <laughs> now please, play Grand Theft Auto for six hours while I suck your dick. I thought that's what... <laughs> living with a woman was gonna be like. But in reality, I'm like, babe, I'm home. She's like, I don't understand. Why is there cocky stains all over the toilet bowl? What is wrong with your cocky? <laughs> Every day I'm cleaning your cocky. I'm like, I don't know what's wrong with mine. It's, it's brown. Is yours clear? I don't know where the cocky is. I'm sorry. I did the double flush. It's still there. We're gonna stay there all day. When the fuck do you shit, by the way? When do you shit? I don't, I don't understand, I don't understand, I don't understand. She's telling me, I don't understand what's wrong with your cake. <laughs> I don't understand how it's physically possible for one of these hairs to come off your head, walk around my apartment, and find its way inside my asshole. <laughs> That's what I don't understand, ladies.
Why is your hair inside my asshole? That's what I don't understand. How did your hair get inside of my asshole every day, by the way? Always in the asshole. I'm finding them wrapped around the head of my dick in the shower like he's trying to kill himself. I'm like, there's reasons to live, buddy. Every day, I'm like one of those fucking magicians with the colorful rags. I'm like, for my next trick. It's wild. I just, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know this. Just insane, man. You know, you don't, you don't know. But it's interesting to have someone like, you know, it's good to have someone with you on the road. That's really good. It's like, you know, we, I, I, but comedians fly a lot, so they have a lot of material about flying. But sh flying stresses me out the most because, like, of the safety speech. Next time you fly, pay attention to how no one pays attention to the safety speech. Okay? If the plane goes down, we're all going to die. No one gives a shit. The other option is death. We choose death every single time. Okay? Because it's boring. It doesn't command your attention. No one wants to pay attention to that shit, which is why... I think every airline should hire the rapper Drake to do their safety speech. If you don't know who Drake is, Drake is a half black Canadian Jew who with those credentials has become the biggest rap star of all time. Let that sink in, okay? When I was growing up, in order to be a famous rapper, you either had to have killed somebody, been in a gang, gone to prison. This guy had a Canadian bar mitzvah. Everyone was like, that's good enough. <laughs> that's how good Drake is. And Drake says the cheesiest, corniest shit, but no one cares, because Drake said it. That's right, one of his songs, he quotes The Wizard of Oz, and no one even noticed. Yeah, in a song called 305 to My City, at the end he goes, oh Lord, we're not in Kansas anymore. I was like, is that fucking Dorothy? <laughs> and he had hood dudes being like, man, that boy Drizzy's spitting that shit. Because <laughs> you can't, Drake, when Drake performs, it's like, it's mesmerizing. You can't help but stare at him. It looks like he's gonna do like a, like a fucking magic show or something. He's always like, he's very like physical. He's always like, always blinking his eyes and shit, he's scaring the fuck out of people. Like, <laughs> contorting his face. Drake always looks like he's about to yell, but he stops. He's always about to yell something, like he's gonna traumatize his kids. He was always like. <laughs> so if he did the safety speech, you'd pay attention to that shit. Imagine next time you get on a plane and you hear this. Only take a second, I need your attention. It's important and I swear you're gonna wanna listen. I'm sorry that they paused frozen, that wasn't my intention. But if the speech could save one life, it'd be worth the effort. Yeah, and there's no smoking on here whatsoever. And don't be nervous if it's bumpy, girl, that's just the weather. Pilot Sam is in control, there ain't nobody better. And if we feel in turbulence, we're feeling it together. But we can still have some fun. This is how to work a seatbelt if you've never done one. If you see the oxygen mask, stay calm and relax. Put it on yourself before you help a loved one, yeah. Don't be nervous if there's something we can help you with. But when you see that food cart, keep your elbows in. Yeah, keep your elbows in. Look, I'm about to meet up with Alexis. She's out in Texas. I'ma study her body like I'm studying these exits. What you're located on your left and right, I go by the name of Drizzy, baby. Enjoy the flight. Thank you so much, guys. I love you so much. I really appreciate you coming out. Thank you so much. You guys are the greatest. I can't thank you enough. This is incredible. Please get home safe. I love you so, so much. Thank you, guys.
and I'm gonna get close. Oh wow! I feel like I just walked on a real special set. I think I want to do. You got on a plane. You hear this? The lights go down. It starts to play. I think what you said about like giving it a beat, I think let's give it with the music. You and we will fade the lights to black and we will start the music and blackout go and music go. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'll throw it over there so you guys will. <laughs> I'm like, oh shit, I'm the one gonna do that. Now. Pretty serious. <laughs>